Alright, this is going to be a relatively quick video on esters and esterification. I will just go through the basics and some of the things to look out for, but it's not the hardest topic, uh, so yeah, it's not going to be too long a video. Alright, esters, we form them by combining an alkanol, which you might already know is just an alcohol. It's an alkane chain with an OH group. We add that to, and this is probably going to be a new term, an alkanoic acid. Even though it's a new term, you would have seen one of these before. What it is, is it's an, once again, it's an alkane back, uh, backbone. So it's a, a chain of carbon, carbon, carbon with saturated hydrogens. But then it's joined on to a C double O H group. Uh, so we, we know these groups uh, as functional groups. Uh, they join on in, in organic chemistry and, and give the parent chain particular physical and chemical properties that uh, are very important and that they influence those organic chemicals in similar ways. So we call them functional groups because they imbue similar functional properties uh, no matter the uh, organic substance they're joined to and the carbon chain they're joined to. So this is the OH group, the hydroxyl hydroxyl group. Uh, note the, the YL there, that's going to be relevant later. Hydroxyl group and this is the Ku group, which is the oic acid. It's an organic acid. Uh, so those are the two functional groups, the OH, C double, and C double OH. Now these two join together and they form an ester. And an ester has the uh, plus H2O, I should point out straight away that it's an ester and water that gets formed. And an ester is pretty much just a combination of the two. So uh, we'll get into the structure of that now. Whatever your alkanol was and your alkanoic acid, uh, they end up being joined together across an oxygen. So the final structure uh, has the alkanoic acid over here. That part of it and the alkanol over here and there's an O join in the middle. And so it's a bit of a giveaway if you see a long carbon chain with all kinds of stuff going on and then it's got an O in the middle in the HSC that is almost certainly going to mean that you're dealing with an ester. Now, uh, the exact structure, you basically draw, uh, well, I might, I might as well actually show the formation in this form as well. Let's say that we joined ethanol plus, uh, let's say, butanoic acid. Uh, so that's got four. I'll cut my work out for me here. But let's say we join these two substances together. The OH group from the alkanol is going to react with the OH group from the alkanoic acid. And what's going to happen is the uh, OH from over here is going to join with the H. They are going to go together and form water. We could say that they condense out. It's a condensation reaction. And then we're left with the O from the alkanoic acid and it joins on to the spare bond here and the alcohol part joins on there. So what we're left with is first of all 
with butanoic acid. One, two, three, four, with an oxygen join up there, oxygen down here, and then one, two from the ethanol. And all the remaining carbons are saturated with hydrogen. So that is our final product. Now I'll get into what that product is named a little bit later. Uh, but let's go back to the reaction and look at the conditions that it's formed under. So, just recapping. It's an alkanol plus an alkanoic acid, and they go to an ester and H2O. Now, what conditions does that happen under? Well, it happens under heat and concentrated sulfuric acid. Now, in the HSC, there is an experiment where you do it, uh, where you create an ester under conditions of acid reflux, which just means that you apply heat and then you stop the substance from boiling away, you, you reflux it back in. I'll, I'll quickly draw that now, because <coughs> it's, uh, it's worth going over. <coughs> you uh, basically have a reaction vessel here. You put, in, uh, you put in your substances, so the alkanol, Alkanol, the alkanoic acid, and you also have concentrated sulfuric acid. Uh, then we apply heat. Now the problem with applying heat is that alkanols, alkanoic acids, and esters, the ester product that we're going to create, they are all going to boil away very quickly unless we do something about it. So what we generally do is we uh, connect a, a Liebig condenser, which uh, uh, once again you can have a look at this when you do the experiment in class, but Liebig condenser basically It carries water in it and it cools down the substances so that when the substances start to escape away uh, the cool water cools them down and then they trickle back into the reflux vessel. Now we can't just seal up the top of the reflux vessel uh, to keep things in because it would explode so uh, don't do that. Uh, you can also put boiling chips in the vessel so that it boils in an even fashion and you don't get big spurts of, uh, of things trying to escape uh, hot liquid getting thrown too far up the, uh, the tube. So that's the experiment, it's under acid reflux. Now it should be noted that if you don't do the experiment under acid reflux, uh, the equation is slightly different. Uh, sorry, if you don't do the experiment with concentrated sulfuric acid as a catalyst, the, the equation is different. So I'll show you that now. Uh, so it's alkanol plus alkanoic acid and then it goes backwards and forwards to an ester and H2O. So it's actually a, a reversible reaction and that means of course that it's got an equilibrium point and that your yield is not a hundred percent because some of these will react with each other. But the reason when we put in that there's concentrated sulfuric acid as a catalyst uh, the, that it's a one-way reaction is because in a kind of ingenious way the sulfuric acid uh, creates that <coughs> H2O, as we know, is water, and what happens when 
concentrated sulfuric acid comes in contact with the H2Os, because it's an H plus source, it's got a high concentration of H plus, that's what it means to be a concentrated acid. Sulfuric acid, for its first ionization, is a strong acid as well, so uh, it contributes a lot of H pluses. And when H plus comes into contact with an H2O, we already know that it forms H3O plus which is not an H2O anymore, and it's not available to take part in the back reaction. So the effect of having concentrated sulfuric acid is to remove all of one of the products. Now if we remove all of one of the products, there can't be any back reaction. So that is why we write the reaction just as a forward reaction. So we push this equilibrium reaction completely to the right, and by pushing it completely to the right, uh, we remove uh, the equilibrium nature of it. So it can be written either way. Properly said, uh, it becomes a one-way reaction once we add concentrated sulfuric acid. Of course, it, it truly speaking, it is a reversible reaction, but we're just constantly interfering with the equilibrium of that reaction by removing one of the products. Uh, so that is an important consideration. Now with that we've actually covered most of the basics of esters. The only tricky thing that remains is the naming and um, I've already kind of foreshadowed this but I want to explicitly state it. Uh, the standard way to do to talk about it uh, is in the order I explained to you. It'll say you'll be presented with alkanol plus alkanoic acid. Now that's not crucial, they could give it to you in another order, but once again this is the standard way, and then goes to something. Now the way to name the resulting ester is we take the two uh, names of the existing, of the alkanol and the alkanoic acid, and they find their way into the name of the final structure, which makes sense because the, the final ester is a result of the, of the two, and it's a simple convention, we take the name of the alkanol and we put a YL after the, the alkane part of that, and we take the name of the alkanoic acid and we put an O8 after the alkane part of that. So uh, if this is X, then it's X or this is Y, YO8. Uh, concrete example, let's say that's methanol. Let's say this is, I'm just choosing this at random, propanol, uh, propanoic acid rather, propanoic acid. Well then we'd say it was uh, methyl propanoate, and that would be the name of our ester. Let's not forget, of course, that water is going to be produced as part of this process, but the resulting name is methyl propanoate. So the resulting name puts the order in the name of, first of all, the alkanols base name, and then the alkanoic acids base name. Now, the the really tricky thing, or the thing to really watch out for when you're doing names and structures and this kind of stuff, is that generally the structure is drawn the other way around, and the way that this comes up in a tricky way in, in the HSC is they'll often just throw a quick question at you, which will draw an ester, and I'm just going to draw one now and I'll figure out the name afterwards. Uh, Alright, they'll draw an ester, well, they'll show you an ester, and they'll say, here it is, and now uh, give us the name. Or they might ask you to draw the structure of one where they give you the name. Now because this is the way that we normally draw this, uh, it actually puts the two components the wrong way around. So the second part of the name is actually going to come first from left to right, and the first part of the name comes second from left to right on the structure. To give you the example, this part over here used to be the alcohol, and this part over here used to be the oic acid. So over here, well, we'll start with the second part first, I guess. 
uh, it's uh, meth eth prop butanoic acid. So it's butanoate. Sorry, whoa, whoa, whoa. I've just made the exact mistake I'm telling you to watch out for, but I've caught myself. Uh, sorry, not butanoic. Uh, but butanol, because this came from the alcohol. And over here, it's meth eth prop propanoic acid. So in determining the name of the substance, we've got to be careful that we don't mix these two up. I mean, it's so easy that I almost did it in the video. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a real a real curveball they can throw at you. I mean, it's not particularly difficult once you know to watch out for it, but the alcohol is going to come second, but it's the first part of the name. To name this, we then go, oh, it's uh, butyl uh, propanoate. So we're going to take the second part of the structure because that's the bit that's the alcohol and that comes first in the name. So that's the, the real curveball to watch out for uh, in terms of questions. And of course if you're asked to draw it, this is the standard way to draw it. Now I should note that there's one other tricky thing they could do here which is to not draw it in this form, to stuff around with the way they draw it and try to trick you. Uh, so I'll show you two ways that they'll do that. One way uh, is not as tricky as such, it's just that they might uh, draw it the standard way, but then just uh, do it straight. Uh, so instead of having the angles on the joins, they might just do it straight. Uh, and what you kind of got to get used to here is that there's going to be an O join and then there's going to be two components. And the one that's got the oxygen double bond on it, that's the side that used to be alkanoic acid. Now, this already preempts the second way that they could stuff you around, which is to draw it straight and also, uh, and also to uh, reverse the order. So they might then go, uh, now of course the standard way is to do it the other way, but they could just throw this at you, uh, give you an ester like this, and say, name this. Now of course, they do it in this order, they're actually giving it to you in the order that the name comes, but you've just got to remember that the bit with the double O joined to it, because you know, there'll be two sides on, on either side of the O join, so that's where the two old molecules came from. The double join, uh, the double joined oxygen denotes which one used to be the oic acid originally, and so that's the bit with the name with the O8, and the other side is going to be the alkanol bit, so that's the ill bit, just to illustrate these two, uh, to you know, give you a couple more concrete examples. That's eth, sorry, meth eth prop. Uh, that's the oic acid side because it's got that, so that's something propanoate, and that's metheth, so that's ethyl propanoate, the top, ethyl propanoate, and down here, uh, it's in the correct order, so it's meth eth prop it's butyl, uh, meth eth ethanoic, uh, so butyl ethanoate. Uh, this is a good time to talk about this anyway. This original substance, of course, is ethanoic acid, which is also known as uh, acetic acid, which is also known as vinegar. So the, the original product here, the, sorry, the original reactant here uh, is vinegar, and that is just one example of an alkanoic acid.